Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am getting it in under the wire but I am back with this month's sheet load rewind. This month we'll be rewinding back to November 2019. I hope you'll stick around, get a look at the sketch, see the new cards I'm going to make with it and find out how you can download the printable for free. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the past few months, I have been revisiting older sheet loads of cards in my Sheet Load Rewind series. If you would like to see more videos in this series, I will have that playlist linked in the description box below. But today, I'm going to quickly show you the sketch, talk about the supplies I'm going to use, and then we're going to make some cards. Once I have made the cards, I will also let you know how you can download the printable for yourself if you're a subscriber to my channel. November 2019 will yield eight cards using just two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and some cardstock. There is a special detail that you'll want to note right down here, and it's how you layer these two pieces and cut them so they'll go on the front of your card. If you're inspired to rewind back to November 2019, make sure to use the hashtags that you see on screen, and I will also have these in that description box below. For my sentiment today, I got out the Sparkle and Shine stamp set from Gina K Designs. I will be using Seasons Greetings. I chose a red cardstock to mat my pattern paper piece and some craft cardstock for my bases. For my two pattern paper pieces, I chose this one over here with the cardinals, and then I'm not sure if you can tell on screen, but the red on the left looks like a knit sweater. Now these are from two different Michaels Hot Buy pads. There wasn't anything left in this paper pad that I like to go with it, so I got out another one, and the colors of red went together perfectly. If I add any more products or tools during the process, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But as always, you can leave those questions in the description box below if I leave you with any. Let's get crafty! Before I get started on the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I recently had an upgrade to paper trimmer level member. Thank you so much to Tammy Pennington. I would also like to give a shout out to the rest of my channel members. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. I started off the process by cutting my two pieces of pattern paper per the instructions on the printable. Now, because I already have a process video for this, I did do that off camera, but here's a look at all 16 of the pieces. I did a little more cutting off camera for the card bases and the mats, and here's a look at those finished pieces. My craft card bases are a top fold card. The next step would have been the pieces for the sentiments, but since I have lots of scraps in this off-white cardstock color, I just got out the container and got out eight pieces that would fit my sentiment. For my ink, I chose Faded Brick from Gina K Designs, and for the sentiment once again, I will be using Seasons Greetings. Now normally, if I was going to stamp eight of the same sentiments, I would use my Misty, but because all of the cardstocks are different sizes, I did get out a stamp block. Now here you'll see me ink up that stamp first with Versamark. Since I am using a red ink, I was hoping that this would help with staining because red is notorious for staining stamps. And I do have to say when I cleaned it later, it still looked pretty nice and clear. 
Yes, I am on my way to 25K, and I'm hoping with a little help from you that we can make this happen, maybe even by the end of 2021. I would love for you to share my channel with your crafty friends, crafty family members, crafty neighbors, crafty coworkers, even just a random shopper in your local scrapbook or stamp store. You can let them know about my channel, and if they're interested in subscribing, that will help me hit that 25K. After all eight of those were stamped, I brought in my box sentiment strip dies from Cat Scrappiness, and I chose one that would fit my sentiment. I took those off screen and cut them down to size. While I work on matting my small pieces of pattern paper, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Now today's is completely for fun and not craft related. I was looking for some questions and I found this Pinterest board with some good ones. I will link it in the description box below if you want to check it out. The one that popped out at me today is what childish thing do you still enjoy? I did put the word childish in quotes because I think that is something subjective for each of us, but something I still enjoy from my childhood are computer or video games. And my weakness seems to be about once or twice a year, I will spend a good two full days playing either SimCity or Tropico or some kind of role-playing game like that. I would love for you to leave your answer in the comment section below and please include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. I am super excited to see the answers to this one. Once all those pieces were matted, I brought in my little Fiskars photo trimmer and I cut this piece into two. I need one and a quarter inch off the right, which means I am going to use the two and three quarter inch mark on the trimmer. Now, once I've cut that down, these will actually get swapped left to right for the final piece. I do make sure that I keep each of the pairs together so they match up for the cards later. The main pieces for the cards were ready to go, so that meant that I could start assembling. I'll show you here on screen how I do one card, and then I did finish the rest off screen. Once those were assembled, I added some foam tape to the back of each of my sentiments, and I die cut eight of these leafy elements for some decoration. Now I'm going to hold those in place using just a foam tape from the sentiment strip. So I place it onto the card between the two pieces of pattern paper. And once I had it where I thought it looked good, I removed the backer from the sentiment and adhered that down. This ensures that it will stay in place, but it still pops up just a little bit for some added motion or texture on the card. I continued to add these until I had all eight decorated, and here's a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this little rewind to November 2019. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now, if you want to download the November 2019 sheet load of cards, I will have a link to the PDF in the description box underneath related links slash videos. Also down there, you'll find the debut and process video from November 2019. So if you have any questions on how to put the set together, because I did go through it kind of quickly today, you can check out that process video and get even more tips. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.